Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I will be showing you how to knit a reversible honeycomb pattern stitch. So as you can see, both sides are identical. So this stitch is really perfect for a scarf uh, because it's reversible. Now if you want to make a scarf out of this, technically it doesn't, you know, it doesn't curve or bunch at the uh, at the edges, it stays pretty flat. But I will say that starting a row on a cable can be tricky sometimes, especially if you're a beginner when it comes to cable knitting. So if you want to knit a scarf out of uh, the reversible honeycomb, definitely go for it. But might I advise that you knit you know, you add a stitch or two, or how many you want to add um, in garter stitch at the uh, beginning and at the end of your rows. We'll just make it easier for you. And yeah, just my advice. Do what you want to do. For this pattern, if you are knitting back and forth, so on just straight needles, um, you can either cast on a multiple of four stitches or if you want it to be symmetrical so that it goes in on both sides and out on both sides at, you know, symmetrically, then I advise you to cast on eight, multiple of eight stitches. If you are knitting this in the round, always cast on a multiple of eight stitches. This tutorial will be can be used for both knitting back and forth and knitting this in the round, just so you know. The pattern is an eight row repeat, uh, but don't worry, it is a very easy pattern because basically six rows of the eight is simply knit the stitches as they come. So just knit the knits and purl the pearls. Very easy. Only two rows out of the eight is where you actually knit cables, but then I will admit it's all cables and you have to keep your senses about so let's get started i've casted on 16 stitches plus three edge stitches on both sides i'm going to start with row one here is the little chart that i've made for the repeat so you can screenshot this if you want I'm just knitting my three edge stitches in garter stitch, so you can ignore that because this, your edge stitches you can do however you want to do. To start out, row one is the setup row. Um, you're just going to purl two and then knit four, purl what? Knit wise, I mean. And then again, Purl two. But if you are repeating this, it just means that you're going to go over in another purl two. So if you're doing repeats, it will basically be purl two and then knit four, purl four, knit four, purl four until you end up with another purl two. I don't know if I just made it more difficult <laughs> or not. Row two, I'm just going to immediately go into row two. You knit the knits and you purl the pearls. Uh, very easy. I do recommend to start with the row one as I, this is my garter stitch edges. I do recommend to start out with um, the row one as I described and not with immediately go into row two or row uh, three or row seven, which are the cable rows. Because if you, unless you've already have knitting done here and you then go over to the reversible honeycomb, that's fine. But if you have an edge here, like you've literally cast it on, and you immediately go into the cable row, it'll be very tight in the beginning. So it won't be as pretty. So I do advise that you give the cables at least a two row build up before you actually go into cable rows. Okay, so row three, this is the actual cable row. These are, and now I'm going to have to think, C4 BPs and C4 FPs. I'm going to get confused at one point, I do know this. First I'll show you how to do it with this. 
cable needle and then I'll show you just how I do it with that. So I've done my garter stitch Here are your four stitches for your cables. These are purl stitches, these are knit stitches. Obviously with the cable, it's the knit stitches that makes the, the curve. So these are the ones you're going to have to see. These are the ones that are going to disappear. So I'm going to put these on my cable needle and put these in the back. I'm going to bring my yarn over this needle, over the cable needle. knit the two stitches knitwise. Then I'm going to take the stitches. You can either transfer them back onto this needle or you can just go straight from the, your cable needle, whichever is con more convenient for you. There is no right or wrong. This is supposed to be fun. This is fun. No, I'm kidding. Just do whatever is more convenient for you. Just make sure that you haven't twisted them. They still are in the same order as they were originally. And so, as they are pearls, you pearl them. So it is rather intuitive after a while. So, a little pull. There you are. Perfection. Now, the next four stitches. This is a C for F. P. F for front. So you can see these are knit stitches, knitted knitwise. These are the ones that kind of have to be visible to make the curve. So I'm going to place these because in the cable you always put the first stitches on your cable needle. And these are going to have to be visible, so we hang them in the front. These two are purl stitches, so we're just going to purl them. I have been told that uh, the way I pearl, I pearl in the different, like, I, I pearl clockwise, and most people do anti-clockwise, I don't know. Don't get confused about that, both methods are equally valid and give the exact same result. Again, w do whatever is more convenient for you. Now we're going to knit these stitches. I'm just going to place them back on the original left needle. Because I think it's always so fidgety, a cable needle. And I'm going to knit them now. There we are. So this is the first repeat for row three, the first cable needle. You can already see that it is going this way. I were to turn the work around, it's going inside. So that way it is reversible in the sense that it is it's a mirror image. It's its mirror image. But it is quite lovely. So now I hate cable needles, sorry. Personal preference. I'm going to do this without a cable needle. These have to be knitted first, and, and then these. So, with my right needle in front of the two, the first two purl stitches, I'm just going to skip them and go into the third and the fourth stitch, pinch these two, get all four of them off, place the purl stitches back onto my left needle, release them, and put my knit stitches back on my left needle and now I'm just going to knit two because I've changed the order of the stitches on my onto my left needle and purl two. I find this more convenient than in fluffing around with a cable needle. But again, no judgment, no shade. You knit however you find it more convenient. This the C4 FP, oh lord, I'm going with my right needle to the back of the knit stitches, skipping them, 
going underneath into the third and fourth stitches, pinching the first two, sliding all four of them off, sliding the stitch one and two back onto my left needle, releasing the pinch, and placing the purl stitches back onto my left needle, and now purl two, knit one, uh, knit two. And there we are. Now for the next three rows, you simply knit the stitches as they come. So I'm just going to skip this, because uh, if you, I'm presuming if you can do a cable stitch that you can recognize what a pearl stitch is and what a knit stitch is. So just to shorten this video, I'm going to skip row four, five and six. Just knit the stitches as they come. If you see a knit stitch, you knit it knit-wise. If you see a pearl stitch, you knit it pearl-wise. I'll see so both for knitting back and forth and in the round exactly the same. See you for the next cable round. So here I am ready for row seven and I'm going to start with a C4FP. I'll do these two with the cable needle and these two without. So the two knit stitches go on my cable needle as you always place the first half of the stitches on your cable needle. It's a C4F, so they go in front. Apologies for the noise, my dog is suddenly very thirsty and doesn't care that I am filming. So, we pull the next two stitches. One, two. And then either you knit these stitches from the cable needle itself or you place them back onto your left needle and you knit them knitwise. Here, again, you place the first half of your stitches of your cable onto your cable needle. This is a C for BP. The B, B stands for back, so we're going to place these in the back. And now my dog is moving my camera. He has no shame. Just going to place it back. Thank you. And I'm going to knit the next two stitches from my left needle and then going to place these two back onto my left needle. Ah. Hay. I have two rabbits so I find hay everywhere. So, and I'm going to purl these two. Again, I'll show this without the cable needle. Two knit stitches, so I'm going with my right needle by the back, skipping the two knit stitches, going into third and fourth stitches, which are the purl stitches, pinching the first two, slipping all four of them off, placing the first two back onto my left needle, releasing the pinch, Putting them back onto the left needle and purling these two because these were originally purl stitches, so I'm purling them and now knitting these. For the next cable, which is a C4BP, my right needle going. Through in front of the purl stitches, just ignoring them, passing them over, going into the third and fourth stitches, pinching the stitch one and two, sli slipping all four of them off, placing the purl stitches back onto the left needle, releasing the pinch, and placing stitches three and four back onto the left needle now in place of one and two. Knit two, pull two. Now I'm going to knit a few more rows. For, according to the pattern, you still need to do one row of um, knit stitches as they come, and then you can repeat the eight rows. I'm going to give you two tips now on how to make it easier to remember what you have to do, so you don't always have to keep a piece of paper or 
that it doesn't matter if you forgot to t twist your row marker one time. Okay, we'll be right back. I have two tips. One regarding how to remember uh, which cable to knit, the one left leaning or right leaning. My other tip is how to keep track of your rows, when to knit a cable row. First tip, when to knit which cable. To be honest, as soon as you set your first cable row, you are set for the rest. Because you're always alternating which cable row, left leaning or right leaning, one after the other. So make sure that you're always alternating. But also, as soon as, for instance, now I'm going to have to knit another cable row. This one was a right-leaning one. If I just, if I were to do the, the three edge stitches, and now I have my four stitches for the next cable row, cable stitch. Which cable to do? Let's see. The one, if I just go down, this one was a right-leaning one, so this one has to be a left-leaning one. If I continue to the next four stitches, this one was a left-leaning, so this one has to be a right-leaning. So, in this aspect and in this aspect, you're always alternating. Little tip before I go on to the next one. Regularly look, take a step back and see, have I made a mistake? Because you don't want to <laughs> frog. You don't want to notice that accidentally you've done something twice at this um, right uh, one cable stitch the same one twice in a row. So regularly step back. But because this is a reversible um, honeycomb instead of the regular honeycomb, this should be more difficult. Because if you were to do two in a row, two of the same cable in the in a row, your knits and, and pearls won't match up. So if that happens, be aware. It probably means that you're accidentally trying to do the same, the wrong cable. Next tip: when to knit a cable row. With the regular honeycomb pattern, it's easier to notice because you always knit a cable row every alternating right side. Here, you also do that, but with the regular honeycomb pattern, there is an actual difference between the right side and the wrong side. The wrong side is genuinely the ugly side. In the reversible one, you still technically have a right side and a wrong side, but they both look exactly the same, so it's difficult to keep them apart, to distinguish them. And if you're just knitting, kind of going with the flow, you could accidentally forget, oh, which row, am I on the wrong side, am I on the right side? It's also in the round, if you're just knitting in the round again and again, that you could forget, oh, am I on an even or an uneven round? how to remember or how to check is you just take your work i find it easier with um when you have four stitch uh, four knit stitches so you see this gap here where you've made it a cable made it two cables find this the little gap this little stitch this little uh, bar, let's call it a bar, was from the yarn that you used during the last cable round or row. So then if you pull these apart a little bit, you can count. This was a cable round, you have to do a cable round or cable row every fourth row. This was the cable, one, e, there's more vis better visibility. So this one was the cable, one, two, three. You've already knitted three rows or three rounds. So the next one has to be your cable round. This is a trick I usually use to measure, or to calculate, or to check where am I. Here again, here's the knit stitches, here's that little gap. The first one was the actual cable row of cable round. And then you see one, two, three bars above it, meaning three rows or rounds have been knitted above the last cable row or cable round. So there. 
easy enough, I think, I hope. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If so, leave me a comment, give us a like, subscribe, all that good stuff for the algorithm, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.